With fancy new cameras and a lack of dedicated headphone ports, the new iPhone 7 and 7 Plus are finally here, and most of the rumours we heard in the run-up to their release turned out to be true. It's the third year in a row that Apple has used the same design, with a major refresh expected next year instead. So, can the new iPhone do enough to make you upgrade? Today we'll take a look at the 7 Plus in a bid to find out. This is the first time we've seen the same iPhone design for three consecutive years. The only thing that's really different about the new phone on the outside are two new colours, the shiny jet black that we've got here, and a regular matte black to replace the old option of space grey. The last time I picked up a plus size iPhone was back in 2014 when I reviewed the 6 Plus. The 5.5 inch screen still feels pretty massive when coming from a regular 4.7 inch model, and one handed use is difficult even if you have large hands. Apple does appear to have fixed the weighting of the phone since the original model, however, which always felt a bit top-heavy for my liking. The glossy jet black paint is slick and has a tendency to slide around and fall off things. This probably won't matter a huge amount because most iPhone owners will buy a case to protect their investment. That's a good job because the shiny finish is a sucker for fingerprints and grease, which isn't really a problem with the old silver and grey aluminium finishes. Weight-wise, the 7 Plus is about 4 grams lighter than the previous model, and 50 grams heavier than a regular iPhone 7. The design is still nice, but I'm a little guilty of feeling like it's a bit old hat at this stage. It's comfortable to hold and use once you've gotten used to the obnoxious size, and two-handed typing is a joy. I am looking forward to a new design though, which probably says more about me than the iPhone. One thing is abundantly clear to me. If you think the regular 4.7 inch model is big enough, or you're still holding onto a 5S or SE model, then the huge iPhone 7 Plus probably isn't the phone for you. This time around, Apple's biggest quote-unquote innovation is the lack of headphone jack. Both models come with a pair of mediocre ear pods in the box that are equipped with a lightning connector. You also get a 3.5mm headphone adapter which delivers no discernible loss in sound quality compared to any other iPhone. The lack of headphone port is only really a problem when you want to charge your phone and listen via a wired connection at the same time, and there are already adapters with lightning pass through which let you do just this. If you opt for wireless headphones then you have a choice of Bluetooth or Apple's new W1 standard, but there's no requirement to cut the cord yet if you don't want to. This year's Plus model features a dual lens camera, which is arguably its biggest selling point. The phone features a regular wide camera and a telephoto that delivers two times optical zoom. The wide camera is faster with an aperture of f1.8, while the tele only manages 2.8. It's a really nice touch and one that will bring a smile to your face if you're really into smartphone photography. Image and video quality is fantastic for a smartphone, and a new quad LED true tone flash further improves Apple's white balancing feature for more natural skin tones. The superior camera is a great reason to opt for the iPhone 7 Plus and makes for a compelling upgrade if your phone is a bit old at this point. My other favourite feature is a new home button that uses no moving parts. Instead, Apple has used haptic feedback to simulate the click of a button press. It's uncanny and really feels like the whole phone is depressing inwards with only a light squeeze. Most importantly, less moving parts means less things to break in the long run. Other features feel like Apple is playing catch up, but they're still important advancements. Both the 7 and Plus model are water and dust resistant, a feature that Sony and Samsung have been parading for years. You can submerge your iPhone to a depth of 1 meter for 30 minutes, which means it can survive more than a splash in terms of real world usage. Stereo speakers are another long overdue addition, and they operate at a considerably louder volume than last year's model. They're still tinny smartphone speakers, but they work especially well on the Plus model which begs to be used in landscape mode due to its large size. Apple has also crammed a 25% wider colour gamut into the screen, which now looks as great as the one found on the iPad Pro. Under the hood, a new A10 Fusion chip eats through just about any task you can throw at it. iOS is as responsive as you could expect, and it'll really show your two-year-old iPhone 6 up when launching apps, switching between tabs, and loading widgets. Apple has upped the RAM to 3 gigs this time around, which again benefits multitasking and multi-tab browsing performance tremendously. This is the third year in a row that Apple has added a gigabyte to the available memory, which is an area where iOS devices have traditionally bottlenecked compared to their Android counterparts. All new iPhones also now start at 32GB capacity, which is a must when features like 4K video and live photos eat up more and more space. Battery life is the other reason to go for a plus sized iPhone. A bigger phone means a bigger battery, and this one can potentially last twice as long depending on what you're doing. In real world terms, this means your phone is much more likely to last all day, which makes the ridiculous size of the device a little easier to overlook. If you can live with a massive phone, you'll love the massive battery. Of course, iOS 10 is also new this year, and just like the latest iPhones, it too doesn't feel like a huge update. Widgets are nice, they fly on the new A10 chip, and it really feels like 3D Touch has matured to a point where most third-party apps at least try to make use of it. If you like the way Apple does things, you'll get on just fine with iOS 10. So, is the iPhone 7 Plus the right phone for you? If you can overlook the size, demand a giant screen, love the idea of true optical zoom, or have high battery demands, then it's definitely worth considering. But it's not for everyone. Remember that features like waterproofing and an improved wide-angle camera are also available on the regular iPhone 7. Your best bet is to head to a shop and try them both out for yourself. Whether or not the 7 and 7 Plus are worthy upgrades depends on your device. 
If you're on an iPhone 6 or earlier, then speed enhancements, more RAM, a better camera, haptics, and 3D touch are all great reasons to upgrade. If you have a 6S, I'd probably recommend you wait to see what's in store from Apple next year. To read our full review and be in with a chance of winning an iPhone 7 Plus, head to makeyousof.com.